He's the only catch up there, Jeremy. Welcome to the spring game pregame show presented by Sons of Saturday. I'm your host, Pete B. Some of you guys might know me from Twitter. Some of you guys might know me from the 2D podcast. But if you don't know me, you might know some of my friends up here. I've got a great group of guys to help me preview the spring game. And we brought a bunch of the independent media types together to do this. And so directly to my right is Pat Finn, one of the founders of Sons of Saturday. Pat, thank you for being here. Good morning. Or should I say, good afternoon, Hokey Nation. <laughs> Next to him, we got Sam Jesse, my partner on 2D. What's up? Thanks for being here, buddy. He ran 3.2 this morning. Give Sam a round of applause. He's a runner. He's a track star. Thank you. Thank you. And then next to him, we got someone texting. It's Dan from Tales of the Terror Dome. He's locked in and ready to go. I'm ready. I've been ready. Born ready. Terror Dan. And then finally, in the last chair, we've got Brian from the Boundary Corner Podcast. Brian. What is up, everybody? How are we feeling today? We're feeling good. We're feeling good. And you know what? Brian was the first one I reached out to last year. I wanted to do this partnership. Dan quickly hopped in the boat. We got sons on board, and the whole thing is now in its second year. And so I'm pumped about this. And just to kick things off, Tootie, we like to talk about what we're drinking. So, Brian, what, what are you drinking down there? What's, that looks kind I've of got a classic Tots rail here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> it is delicious. Uh, I will be uh, feeling it a little bit later, but that's okay. <laughs> what you got going on, Dan? Man, when you come to Tots, man, you got to do a ice cold Miller latte. It's like a, <laughs> it's like that McDonald's poker sprite, man. It just hit different here. I don't know what it is. Uh, Sierra Nevada, hazy little thing IPA, one nice. of the classics. It's a, a good one to get started. Yes, I'm having the same thing. I'm having a little hazy little thing. And I see this is familiar. A son's partner. It's a little PBR time. It's game day in Blacksburg. You gotta have your PBR. I got my USA Coach Price shirt on, and it matches my PBR very nice. <laughs> Only football stadium in America. Hashtag <laughs> has <nice> blue <laughs> ribbon. So if you are watching on YouTube, go ahead and just. Click the like on the video. That would help us out tremendously. And if you want to comment, please do. I don't see any comments. It's also really hard to see with the sun in my eyes. But if we see some comments come in, we will ask the questions to the fellas. Let's start with just Spring Jam. Spring Jam was last night. It was a blast. Did you guys have fun? Did Billy Ray have fun last night? I think he might have had a fun. Billy Ray in the audience. Can we get a, can we get a wave in the audience? There he is. <laughs> he, was, he was on one, but it was so good to see so many of the former players. Tyrod was out. Uh, Coach Foster, J.C. Price, the and list goes brothers. on. Al Clark, I, I asked Al, Al Clark, Clark to, to, for a ticket. I didn't recognize him at first, and I felt like a jerk. Shout there were so Clark, many, man. so many cool people out last night. So that was a blast. Thank you to the Suns for putting on Spring Jam. If you're ever down here in the future, you didn't make it down, you got to come to Spring Jam next year because it's it's a it's a must go to event. Maybe we should talk about some of the players. So let's do quarterback. Everyone, we saw Kevin Jones last night. Kyron's dad. Was Kevin there. was a blast. He was awesome. having fun. Dude, awesome Kevin guy. was living his best life last night. Yeah. That guy rocks. <laughs> he has been on the Boundary Corner podcast uh, once or twice, just chatting it up with us. Seems like he likes it here. I think there was a little bit of a rumor mill going around that our quarterback might have been getting offers elsewhere. Do we all feel comfortable in, in Kyron being here next year? There was never a more collective sigh in Hokie Nation than when Kyron asked, for a sectional on Twitter, <laughs> that was that Man. was incredible. That was low key, perfect. You don't you don't move a sectional. <laughs> Not to LSU. He's no. moving in. <laughs> hey man, I feel pretty confident. You know, last year we sat here and I said, Ollie Jennings ain't come here to play with Grant Wells. Well, I know for a fact all these receivers came here to play with Kyron Jones. So we good, man. I feel I feel great about it. I think he's locked in. Um, and the hype train's getting pretty out of control. The hype train is getting a little out of control. Did you see someone put that he was the number one returning quarterback in the ACC, in the ACC over yeah. DJU? That was kind of a, a clickbait account maybe, but still, it is a it, it's, out, it's out there. I mean, technically, he was the only one that returned to the ACC from the ACC, right? So, Well, as far as like Cam and, <laughs> yeah, and DJ, yeah. right? All right, well, QB2 then. We're going to see, hopefully, a lot of those two guys. We got Whitby, we got Pop. Do you guys think – we saw Pop last year kind of go off a little bit in the spring game, a couple cool plays. Everyone, de facto, this is the next guy. After, you know, maybe if, if Wells doesn't work out, maybe it's Pop instead of Drones. Well, Drones proved to be the man. Is Pop for sure number two? Because we've been hearing a lot about Wiki doing well in practice. And, Dan, I'll ask you, what do you, what do you think? Well, I think Pross said it was going 50-50. It was kind of leaning Wiki, and now it's kind of leaning Pop. But 
I feel like Pop's athleticism and his like speed and ability to run the ball are probably gonna set him apart in that race. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're bringing in Keldon Ryan, who's shooting up recruiting boards out of Texas, and Texas to VT. Like. <laughs> and then they also have Dobby Belfort, who oh, is man, yeah. a bit of a social media guy with the you know his dad and the whole Brazil football thing. So I think it's interesting this year. It's gonna be interesting next year too because you talked about drones. This is a NFL springboard year for him. And if you look at the upcoming NFL QB class, he has a good year. He's going to run it, yeah. as he should. So you're going to have a quarterback vacancy next year. That's true. Pat, are you, you, I mean, do you think it's pop? I think it's pop. So I've, I've heard that pop has filled out a little bit as well. I know last season was he, was very, he looked very skinny out there, obviously being a, uh, being a young guy, but another year in the program, another spring in the program. It's going to be good to see him out in pads today. Just for a so let's talk about the guys that will be protecting our quarterback this year, which is was a bit of an issue beginning of last year. We talked about it a lot on the show when we were at Sharky's uh, doing the spring game pregame show. Throughout the year, though, that O-line continued to improve. But the projected starters for this year haven't changed. We're still seeing some of the same names that had issues. How are you feeling about right guard and right tackle, Brian? Because those are the two spots that are not uh, – not locked in. I think they're, they're still guys battling. Yeah, not locked in. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how Montegas Cunningham comes along. That's the one I'm most interested in. Uh, I would have liked to see maybe one more guy come in through the portal. That would have made me feel a little bit more comfortable with the situation. Um, obviously, Shake and Parker have had up, had up and down moments, but you know, we saw with the drones came in, you had a little bit of tweaks to the scheme. I think that helped open up some things for what the offensive line was doing and kind of lean more to their strengths. So we'll see if that's something that we can build on this year. But I'm hoping that Montavious Cunningham or maybe even a Brody Meadows takes another step and can kind of at least slide into one of those spots on the right side of the line. I have been optimistic on Brody, especially since we saw him play really well in the spring game last year. And he was very young, though, still. And what do you think on, on right guard? Because we are so many guys battling. And we started out Cunningham at right guard rather than tackle, which he played all of his snaps last year at tackle. Yeah. I would just say, like, Offensive line the last two spring games has been just terrible. It's been really bad. But one of the teams especially. Is, yeah, is and so terrible. I think this year you're going to see, like, that's going to be the biggest improvement that you're going to see is, oh, we have 10, 11 guys who can actually block this year. And that's going to make the whole – that makes practice better, that makes spring game better, makes the whole team better. So I'm excited to see maybe not as much just positionally. I'm excited to see the whole unit kind of work together and just perform better because last two years – it was rough. It yeah, was rough. it yeah. was rough. But I, Crook being here for a second year, we saw the improvement. How how big do you think that is, Brian? Just from the having played the position, like two years under the same coach, will that make a substantial difference? I mean, continuity is always important. I mean, from a scheme perspective, from an expectation perspective. So I think you're going to see more progression from those guys as, as it goes along. And I'm interested to see what those young guys are going to bring to the table as well. Um, we got guys like right now I'm very interested to see what – our second team center system. Like, really don't we don't have a backup center. Right I don't now, really know what that's going to look yeah. like. So I'm interested to see what that's going to look like. Let's move to something a little bit more fun, a little bit more talked about. Is been our wide receivers because we brought back all. Of them. It was actually shocking when we saw that announcement. It wasn't one or two guys. It wasn't just Ali Jennings. It was all four of our main guys. We'll be back this year. But there's also guys pushing those guys from coming up from the. You know, whether it's from high school or just on the roster already, an XTB type. It's Kai Heath. Keelan Adams has been doing great in practice. Which guy outside of Jennings, Felton, Lane, and Gosnell, what other receiver will break out this year? Aiden Green. That's your guy. That Aiden Green, dude. He was a mon like he got a lot of cardio last year. There was a lot of reps where he was just running routes. But I think like this year, it might mean the if if it is, looks the way in the game is it looks in practice he's gonna put up some put some things up athletic greens get him the nil deal <laughs> now <laughs> that's not bad what, do, you, do you have a breakout uh, uh, go outside of aiden green is there anyone else that you think is going to be potentially like feeding out a stephen gosnell for catches you you know yeah. keelan brody adams i think he's going by brody he's he's brody on the roster, the roster brody, now yes yeah. yeah, so yeah. brody adams i mean he's special he has bhsl records at wide receiver i i'm really excited to see him because again like quarterback it's about preparing for next year when they're going to have a mass exodus in that room who's going to come and step up and i think he's one of the guys where 
you watch his film in high school and you watch how he progressed, man, he's special. He's yeah. really special. We have an embarrassment of riches at the wide receiver position, which is something. I mean, I've been following this team a long time. I think Trey said 2018 might have been competing with it. I said this is the best receiving core since 2016, probably when we had Ford, Cam, and Bucky, and Bucky was basically a wide out. And Devin Wilson. And CJ Carroll. <laughs> oh, yeah, Devin Wilson. Shout out you. <laughs> but, yeah, it, it's great. Fontel Mines, like, I don't know how much longer he's going to be a tech because that guy's just doing so much work, and we keep giving him raises, and he's an assistant coach or assistant head coach now, but he has done amazing things with that wide receiver room. Let's talk about defense quickly before we kind of close out this segment and move on to, to some other guys coming up here. Who is going to be the guy opposite of APR? I know last year we saw a lot of Cole Nelson, and he was a guy they talked about being better against the run. Burgos has been getting a lot of love. Is that the guy that you think puts up either the highest or second highest sack numbers on the team? Man, I... I'd like to see Burgos put up those numbers. I also look out for C.J. McCray. I'm kind of – I think he's going to turn a corner this year. Uh, he's a guy that's moved from safety to linebacker and now to, to defensive end. I think he's a guy that can really put put the pieces together, and I think he matches APR skill set a little bit more in terms of doing after the pass. There's a comment on uh, from YouTube. Brian, chug that rail if you think we win more than two games this year. <laughs> <laughs> There are 400 people watching Brian Chug That Rail. Strap in. Oh, let's go. It'll be a day. The, the Wi-Fi toss is actually working, which is good. Uh, we, are, we are cooking, but close, closing out the thoughts on D-line. Closing out the thoughts on D-line, Burgos has a bit of the pop. Nelson has been more consistent. Brian has said that for the last couple of years. But that's a that's a position to rotate, man. That defensive tackle, you're rotating guys every other drive. You need three or four guys out there. It's not a just two starters to go. So good that they have solid players at that position and at defensive tackle. I'm excited to see them. Oh, tackle. I'm pumped about the guys you brought in. Yeah, I mean, yo, first of all, shout out Pat for mixing in the water. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, it's about time, man. This defensive line, JC, great coach. Uh, I don't care what anybody says. I love JC. I think he's, he's done well, and. Uh, you know, we got dudes running. We got tackles running over 21 miles an hour. Copeland like, what are we doing? Copeland, Copeland, Copeland putting up, not, uh, bending bars in the weight room. Like, dude, we like, yeah, I'm excited for this the defensive deep, line. We again, we talked about the the riches at wide receiver. I don't remember our D line having the names, having guys that they're excited about hearing the coaches talk about since the four guys we had in like 2015 when it was Daddy and Marshall and Natty and all those guys. But Pat, I have a question for you. Because you've been looking yeah. pretty up here, but, you know, we got, we got to get some commentary uh -oh. out of you. This is a tough one, right? So this year we might see Dorian Strong play a little bit more nickel. He's got kind of a body type for that. I think that probably hinted at it a little bit, maybe even said it outright. If he's playing inside and you got Mansoor on the outside, who's the other corner? Who's the other starting corner? Because Canteen is no longer here. You're going to put me on the spot? I'm putting here? you on the spot. Come on now. Who can Dante help me Lovett. out? Of Dante Lovett. Dante Lovett. Dante Lovett. Okay, that's what I'm thinking as well. Um, or is Braylon Johnson, he's still playing CB, right? I mean, like, he hasn't moved to safety, so that would be an option as well. Those two young guys, but I think we got a lot riding on Lovett. I know everyone's talking about our DB core, like, oh, we're solid, we're solid. But these days in college football, you do end up playing a lot of nickel. You're going to need to rely on Dante Lovett on the outside. Yeah, am, I, am I correct, right? That seems that like it's where it's headed. Absolutely, absolutely. And, I mean, don't sleep on Braylon Johnson either. So, uh, Braylon, is, uh, his pedigree speaks for itself. That's right. That's right. Is O-line still the number one concern in terms of position groups going into this year? Or is there anything else that concerns you? I think I think to level up, the, the O-line play needs to level up as well. Like, okay. If we're going to meet what we think we could potentially be, the O-line needs to take another step. Okay. I'm concerned about linebacker. I, I, even though Seriously. Brumfeld comes in, they've been saying all the right things. He's coming up a level in terms of going from a G5 to a P5. There's no more P5, but you know what I mean. Are you are you guys feeling? Because like Kelly Lawson wasn't at in spring. Like it's it's a concern for me about because we've tackled so poorly in the linebacking core at times. Brumfield played Alabama. He played Missouri. Two of the best rushing offenses in the country last year. Played really well in both those games. 
Okay. Um, I am worried a little bit about linebacker, though. I think Caleb Woodson is a guy who could show out today. Met his parents last Met night. his parents. They were great. <laughs> uh, he's a guy who could show out today and take that step up. But I think for me, it's the linebacker plus safety filling the run gaps. That is the number one concern in the defense. Yeah. And I honestly think it might be more of a concern than the offensive line because the offensive line improved. So we talked about it on the podcast. They actually graded out above average by the end of the season. Which is wild. Because the first three, four games were really well. Yeah, so I think that's – it's teams cannot hand the ball off and run for 50 yards right up the middle yeah. in every single game. Or can I have it? Sam breaking it down. All right, that's going to do it for segment number one. We're going to be back with a couple more guys. I think we got Billy Ray coming up. We got Treadmill Horse of Twitter fame. We got Drift coming up next, and I'm driving again. So I'll be back. All right. Five minute break. We'll be back on YouTube. Hang with us. So, would you say it's a road soda? <laughs> <laughs> Dan, there was a comment here. Dan better start hitting that beer or it's going to get warm. No, it's not going to get warm. Taking a quick photo. All right. Look at, it's not, you know, quit nursing it. Hey. Look at me, baby. All right. One, two, three. All right. All right. Oh, you got the same. You're right. Yeah. You're, you sit on the end because you know our space. Oh, you sit on the end. You're I just, I just like you're you're six foot four. Right? We're getting a little <laughs> speed chart going on. Yeah. Oh, what's up? Are we next to you, buddy? Why don't you come down here? Okay, okay. I'll yeah. yeah. sit next to Billy. All right. The other one is crazy. He's kind of a, getting some coffee. I think I think I know why it's I'm not going to wear a thing. I had to come to I didn't want to say you were going to have a Oh, shit. 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 Uh, HR. Uh, can we get a? Can we get a? Can we get a HR? I am in HR. <laughs> Are you really in HR? Nah. Hold the mic away from your mouth. He's like, what? Like you? Try. Try. I know, but I'm just letting everyone know we're talking. You can do my bad. We're looking for tape. Sorry, dude. Whatever. I'm too. I'm too. I'm too. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Ye
Oh, Steve Fenn. I love Steve Fenn. <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. Not yet. We got a lot of people watching on YouTube, and we appreciate everyone out there. This is segment number two, and this is going to be more of our preview of the game. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is segment number two, and this is going to be more of our preview of the game. A little bit of a season preview, a little bit of a game preview. And the ro rosters were actually released in advance. That is not something we've had the last couple weeks. We got them on Thursday. First of all, orange and maroon are the team colors. We're getting color rush, fellas, which that's what the NFL started doing on Thursday nights. But it's nice to see both of our colors out there. I assume the quarterbacks will be in white. Oh, I would guess. <laughs> can't, can't touch them. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of colors. On that. Did you guys get a chance to peek at those rosters? Yes. Yeah, yeah. What you know, I see Kyron's on the Maroon team. We've got a bunch of really good like Malachi's on the Maroon team. We got Aiden Green, Keelan, Felton, X T V, two both Moore brothers. Like I was first going to the offensive line, I was going to D lines. When you were looking at that, what what team do you think has the advantage going into the spring game? It's 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 Maroon. Whichever one Kyron's on. Yeah, that's that's I had the same thought. Kyron might only play a couple drives. But they'll put up some points early, and I think that'll be enough to ride it out. Yeah, that was the concern for me, is that if Kyron goes in and only plays two drives, well, then we have Whitkey, and if you think Pop's number two, then that might give Orange the advantage. Drift, I think yep. you put something out on Twitter saying you yeah. thought Orange had the edge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I think uh, the offensive line is better on Maroon. Uh, I think the defensive line is better on Orange, so I think it kind of evens out. But um, I think we're going to get more Pop versus Whitkey today than we are going to get Pop versus Kyron, and so... Going orange. Okay. I like it. I yeah. think that's the reason. But, you know, the wind, the, you know, plays a little bit of a play. It, it, it will play a factor. Billy, did you get a chance to look at those those two maroon and orange rosters over there? I, I got to be honest with you. I have I have not had a chance to look at the rosters. Do you I think it matters much? I, look, I, I'm on the record on the spring game. It is an awesome opportunity to get to know the players. I love what they do when they have the entire team come out and you're introducing everybody, all the new freshmen, where they're from, and have the entire stadium get to know them. If you're coming here to Blacksburg to learn about the football team for next year, probably not going to learn a whole lot. That has kind of been my spring game, my spring game mantra. Um, I do think that it's going to be interesting to see some of the younger guys, especially at the quarterback position and the defensive line and the offensive line play. Um, but we're pretty sure what the team is going to look like, especially at our skill positions going into next year. So I view the spring game as an opportunity to hang out with, uh, with friends and uh, have a good time. And we did that. And check, check, check. <laughs> we did that last things. night. We're doing it right now. And I actually didn't give uh, Drift a proper introduction because he's from the BT4L pod. Does, Thanks, you know, man. I think I heard someone say lovers, but that's for life or legends. Which one legends. is it? Legends. Legends. Okay. Yeah. 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 You know the, the, the history on the legends. It, it comes from Dondi Fridays. And, uh, <laughs> that's right. <Legend>. There, there's <laughs> some, uh, yeah, there's some... There's some culture there, so it's a great, it's a great, it's a great. Don thing started Don uh, Fridays as a culture podcast. Quickly got more listeners talking about tech every single episode. He talked to Charlemagne. <laughs> talked about basically everything, and uh, you know, shout out him. He He's here somewhere, on, right? He's off yeah, on Chicken Hill right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm just a random guy from like Michigan. I love tech. So, you know, <laughs> this is great for me. Uh, uh, someone told me last it. night you had a, a parent that went to tech briefly or something. No, no that's not so, true. <laughs> that's not true. There's a lot of rumors going around. Uh, the the real answer is my parents lived in Roanoke before I was born, okay. so they encouraged it. Uh, I didn't know that. They did. Oh, okay. We're, we're it kind of takes away from the randomness. It, it, yeah, don't tell people that. Yeah. 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 You can lean into it. I, I got just take it. Who loves I, the host. Take it. I mean, my parents are immigrants, so they don't have teams. You know, they just kind of they don't really watch that much sports. So I picked it freely. Well, uh, we got great colors and we got a great it. fan base, so we're welcome. We're, you know, love to oh, have yeah. you. Oh, yeah. And let's get back to some questions because this one's actually a good one because we remember two years ago, Caleb Smith went off in the spring game, and it foreshadowed a great season. Last year we saw Grant Wells play well in the spring game and it foreshadowed the same thing we saw the previous season which was it was pretty mid right so who is going to win the caleb smith award today for a great standout performance that actually foreshadows a great season i'll ask you first Jeff. so you mentioned wide receiver and caleb smith i'm going wide receiver with this and aiden green i know you talked about him on the previous segment i just think he's a guy who's primed to have that breakout like, I remember the year that Caleb Farley had that huge spring game playing wide receiver. And it's he, he had gotten a lot of hype in the offseason. 
And then everyone was waiting to see what he would do, and he blew out at wide receiver in that spring game, which was awesome. He didn't end up playing wide receiver after that. He would have been a great one. He would have been had, a great had one. They kept yeah, him there, yeah. Absolutely. And by the way, Drip kind of looks like Caleb Farley. He kind of does. Play. I want to say that. Yeah. So it gets thrown me off. I'm going to get a number three jersey for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got to get him that jersey. All right, I'll win costume. Does anyone else have a pick for a standout that's going to have a great season this year? Go ahead, Bill. I'm going to go with Harrison St. Germain. I think Let's go. Uh, the yeah, I think there's a lot of talent in the tight end room. I think he's a uh, young guy. Tucker, Tucker Holloway has said some awesome things about him. Jalen Lane has said some awesome things about him. And uh, just continues to work, continues to work, and I think he's going to have a lot of opportunity. Played really well against Tulane, so I'm excited to see uh, his game grow. And, uh, Learn something there in the, uh, in the spring game. What do you got, Sam? Uh, can I piggyback off of that? Sure, quick? sure. We're not talking enough about how good this tight end camp is. Even losing big home right to Ole Miss, like, guys now four-star recruit out of high school, has done nothing but perform when he's there. Nick Gallo has done nothing but do his job since he's been here. He's coming back. Harrison St. Germain, reserve guy last year, popped off later in the season doing great. And then, you know, it's – didn't he have a touchdown in the bowl game? Had a touchdown in the bowl game. Yeah. Yeah. So I, we're, we don't talk enough about how important the tight end position is to this offense and how well they've done setting that position up for the future. Jerry, uh, Jerry what's your pick? I'm going uh, Dante Lovett. So we talked about him in the previous segment. Um, I think losing Canteen. Canteen played a lot last year. And I think uh, Dante Lovett's going to take those snaps this year. And uh, I think we're going to see a, a good performance from him today. So. He started to emerge later in the season. Had some really nice one-off plays here. Here and there and with more snaps who knows what he could do now this one we're going to be a little careful here because i don't want to i don't want to disparage any of these players but who's going to win the grant wells award for someone who has a great game today but maybe doesn't follow it up in the season i mean this is a crazy play <laughs> Hey, this is what we're going for. We're starting to I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the weather because I actually feel like. Uh, this is, uh, <laughs> Shout out to Pat. You guys got relationships. It is, it is to the top. Top. I am a, here's the player I think is gonna play well and then not play well in the fall. So I'm gonna go with the weather. I think we're gonna have a great weather day today. <laughs> And maybe the weather won't hang up so well in the fall. Uh, <laughs> well, not with pretty windy. So I'll say my guy who I think is gonna stand out in these peoples. He was a freak in high school, but Tech didn't pursue him because he was too small. He hit the weight room at Duke, got really good. He's a special, like he's a quick twitch, Ricky Walker-esque defensive tackle. Really excited for him. And I think the player who's going to be like, wow, he's killing it and not going to do it as much in the fall is actually Aiden Green because he's probably wide receiver four, wide receiver five. We don't pass the ball. Dude, enough. his parents are right there. <laughs> I mean, he's great. He's great. But it's like, not, we it's don't not throw the ball enough for wide receiver four or five my, my, to produce. It's just there's not enough numbers. That's what I'm saying. It's like my guy would be Jeremiah Coney for the exact same reasons. He could be great. We have two really good running backs in front of him. So we're going to see some of these young guys play really well, but then because of the depth chart, they might have to wait another year to really blow up. Today is a trial for 2020. I look at it the same way. I think Dylan, Whit Dylan Whitkey's my guy. He's going to get a lot of opportunities to throw the ball today. I think he's probably going to look good, but like I don't think we're going to hear from him again in 2024. Well, we're hoping not, right? Because well, if everything goes right, Kyra's I mean, healthy and we're good. <laughs> I think that's what I'm expecting. Yeah, everyone's crossing themselves up here. Um, yeah, but I would also put like Jeremiah Coney. I think he's going to get a lot of carries today. Tyler Mason's going to get a lot of carries today. So, I'm excited to see Mason. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll see a lot of these guys. But honestly, like again, this is a tryout for 2025. I think they're going to get a chance to shine today. But we might not hear their names again for the rest of the year. All right, we tiptoed around that one. That was like Louis C.K. telling a joke on SNL. But well, now we'll move on. Right? <laughs> Reference. <laughs> That's good. Piece. What could we see today that says? Okay, we're definitely winning 10 games. Like, is there something you could see you today? You know how this goes with me. As yeah, long as the, sun as, in, as, if the sun is in the sky and the grass is green, as far as I'm concerned, we will find a way to win 10 games next year. And oh. That's basically, every, ever, that's basically evergreen every single year. I think oh, every okay. time I'm out okay. there. Um, no, I feel, I feel really, really good about this team, and I think this spring game specifically, again, we kind of know what the roster is going to look like, uh, give or take. We have another another portal window coming up. We're figuring out the offensive line situation. Um, but in terms of 
excitement around the program and excitement around the roster specifically. There's always been excitement around the program, but excitement about the roster and how many talented individuals you have in different rooms. I don't remember it being like this. Um, you know, I, I don't remember people breaking down the spring game. Uh, no matter what I think about it, people are so excited about this upcoming year. They've been talking about it for months now. since the since the bowl game since ended. The, since the bowl game ended, so. Um, Yes, it has to be one of the more anticipated. What, what was the last season with this much anticipation? Seriously. Anticipation, well, anticipation for success, not anticipation for I can't wait to jump I around. I think uh, before 2015, when we were playing Ohio State game one, there was a lot of excitement because we had beaten them the previous year, and, hey, maybe we'll do it again. Maybe we would have done that. But that was, there was a lot of excitement leading up into that year, but this roster is so much better than that roster. I think the Tyrod years when we knew that team was the best, one of, if not the best in the ACC. Since then, we haven't had a roster that is this well put together. Yeah. To me, it's you got to go back all the way to like 20, after 2011, after we were in the Sugar Bowl. I think there we still have the expectations of like 10 wins and huge seasons. I don't think I've seen this type of hype since then. It's, and been, I mean, it's been a long time. It's hard to reflect. Like, when you go back 12, 2011, 13 years ago, I mean, it's hard to remember what you felt. I remember buying my tickets to the Boise State game at FedEx. And I was so juiced up for that year. I, I was like going to Gobbler Country or whatever the heck up sites that were out there. There wasn't much, not like today, with all the content that's out there for Virginia Tech football. I would check every day for a new Virginia Tech article because I was so excited for the Boise State game. And that was a tragic end. But that's the level of excitement I'm starting to feel towards this season. I wanted to get one a commentary from Drifter or Sam on the uh, what could you see today that makes you feel more optimistic about the upcoming season? I liked uh, Billy's uh, offensive line situation. That, uh, <laughs> that was a nice situation. It's a good word for it. Yeah, um, right. I think last year the offensive line looked pretty poor uh, in the spring game and uh, reflected in the season at times. And so, I don't know. I'd like to see that improve today. You want to see him block. I mean, lock, it's got to be, well, well, be better, and we didn't bring in a whole lot of transfers, so it's got to be just improvement, you know? just development improvement. I think on that note, I, I I think that the overall way that we improved our offensive line last year was a lot of schematical changes. I know Coach Holmes did a great job uh, on our end of uh, breaking down what Coach Crooks was doing, um, but I, I think they did a fantastic job of basically Tech had to reinvent itself two or three times last year when you make the quarterback switch and then when you really refine what he's able to do and then you make more switches on what he feels comfortable and what he's best at. So um, I really think we've talked about that ad nauseum, how much credit is deserved there. But if you think about some of the other stuff that's going on in the spring game, not just players that have popped off and maybe haven't played as much. I mean, we literally had Caleb Farley had a one-handed catch as a wide receiver in the spring game. Like crazy stuff. You see, crazy, crazy you see stuff. some wild things. Right. You see some wild things. So um, – well, let Sam get in on this. Yeah. Yeah. I, the line of scrimmage, like, if it looks competitive, that would be good to me. Because that means we know, like, we know what Fuga can do. We know what Peebles can do. We've seen them in ACC play. If this offensive line can step up and block those guys, or if those guys can make plays against a much improved offensive line, I think we'll feel good. If that's iron sharpens even, iron, man. If I mean, that's even, yeah, then you feel good. I, I agree with that because I do think the D line's much improved. So if they can actually hold up the block to Drift's point, to your point, it, it could be we could be in for a promising year. And I'm excited about having our coach here for a second year. We're gonna do a couple of props, a couple of over unders before we move on to segment three. Sam put these together. They're incredibly detailed. I'm gonna get to as many as we can here, but I wanna let's start with just uh, the game total, over under points. I think last year Treadmill said always take the under in the spring game. Sam has set the line at 42 and a half total game, game points. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking? Check it out. Well, I think Sam's doing an awesome job setting these lines, by the way. So call out. Because that is low. That. That's a low yeah. total. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm still taking the under. I'll always take the under. So under 42 and a half. Nice. What do you got, Sam? You said Am it. Am I going to bet on my own? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. highly illegal. illegal. You're like the kid from LSU. <laughs> Get in there. Jeez. Um. I'll, I'll say over, but slightly. I think you're gonna see, I think you're gonna see Pop and Whitkey look like young quarterbacks against a good defensive secondary. I think our defensive secondary is deep enough that they can hang with these wide receivers. Drift, you got over under with you at 42 and a half. 
kind of go to the over, you know? Yeah. Like, Let's get points. some excitement yeah, going. Give the points. <laughs> yeah. Give the points. Bill, you going over or under? I'm going to go under, and I think spring games, if, the, if my memory serves me correctly, it's just there's not going to be a tremendous difference. I feel like that we have a really balanced football team this year, so you're not going to see exactly. And then also when you get to, like, the end of the third and into the fourth quarter, you have a lot of guys who aren't getting a lot of live scrimmage time that are then participating in the scrimmage. Yeah, there's just not going to be a ton of scoring that goes on at the end of the football game. So, um, I'll go under. All right. This one's a problem. First TD in the spring game. Sam, Sam did this, like, he's got the plus here, man. Like, best odds, two, <laughs> plus two, 257. Jennings is plus 400. Felton, 5.5. Drones, 5.5. Lane, 5.5. And then other... Plus 1,000. You taking the field here, or are you taking one of those top guys? Go ahead, Trish. So for me, you got to go with the odds-on favorite here. You got to go with two. I think First they're going to get two okay. the ball, and it's going to get an early touchdown. For sure. Okay. I read your tweet the first time you put it out, and I thought it was silly. And now the more I think about it, if there was ever a time to be like, hey, look, we're just going to go ahead and do this on the first play of the spring game to get people fired up. Yeah. I could, okay, can I, can I talk like, about that real quick? Yeah, Wait, yeah go for it. Go for okay. It. Um, I don't know if anyone watched. No one watched it. I'm too much of a college football nerd. No one else watched it. NC State spring game, they had their first string offense against not their third this. string defense. <laughs> I, I heard about it. They I put on like 50-something points. It was pathetic looking. That They put on a show for the fans. If I was Brent Pry, I would 100% rig the spring game. Rig it. For rig points. It. Like, no, 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 no. So what I do is I run a couple handoffs, maybe a swing pass. We're feeling good. But I tell everyone, hey, play five. Defense, we're going to run a wide cover two. Lane in the slot goes off motion. Runs a skinny post. Don't tackle. New cleats. <laughs> new cleats. Guys slip all the time in new cleats. So you're like, you're it. really rigging this thing. Bomb it. Everyone looks – defense doesn't look bad. They're playing the flip flops in the this secondary. One, this one play. You in top ten? Why not? I mean, that's... and then you t- oh, drones did great. All right, go. S- we're taking your helmet. Yeah. Go sit on the side. I want to get Sam we're on good. the staff now. Like, yeah, right. So we need yeah, to find a position yeah. for him. Drift. What do you think on first touchdown? Taking a Felton. Felton. You know, that's I like good. that. I like where you're, like where you're going there. I think it should be a bomb. Bomb Felton. And uh, yeah, Felton is on the maroon team, so it's either going to be coming from yeah. drones or with Felton on a hitch and go. Yeah. Just Bob. We've seen it all season, right? So I've seen the script. I've seen the script. All right. And then there's a couple more props here, and then we'll cut this thing off. Which one should we go with here? Uh, total turnovers? That, is that fun? No. Uh, let's do uh, drones passing yards, because this is interesting. 149 and a half yards. That seems high to me for a guy who might only play. 149 is the over under. Are you taking. I know you're going like, under. Super under. Because like, I'm like, I'm trying to think of what it would have to happen for him to get to 150. And basically, he'd have to be in for One three. yard over 149. <laughs> That's math. I mean, you'd have to put him in for three series, and he'd basically have to bomb it on like all three series. Like, I just, I just don't see it. Do you know how many yards Grant Wells had last year? It, I mean, he went nuts. So I think over 200. He oh, wow. a lot of snaps. I, I, I do not think that Kyron Jones is going to play as much as Grant Wells did last year. No, I hope to God he does not. Would, would, would we would we all be fine if drones like literally either didn't play or played like two two snaps? If he was wearing pajama pants yeah. and a sweatshirt, I'd be so happy. If, if he comes out after one drive, I'm really not that surprised. All right. I think that I mean, Sam, do you want to? Is there any one of these that you're really passionate about? We'll do one more. I'm passionate, passionate about passionate all my lines. <laughs> Really yeah, well, about. How about how about all right? So we got three defensive tackle transfers in. We honestly don't have a lot of defensive tackles playing in this game, so they're going to get a lot of run. Peebles, Copeland, Gillum, over under three and a half tackles for loss between those. Three. This was actually my favorite line that you made because like I I can like see it and I actually think this line set really well. But I think that since, since we're playing two hand touch with the quarterbacks in the spring game, I think they're going to hit the over uh, on this one. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm going over. I'm going over as well. Uh, that's yeah. I'm, I'm I mean, exactly. and the sacks will be easy to come by, but I also think those guys are going to get after the running backs in the backfield. And we'll, we'll see. We'll see some TFLs for sure. Phil, before we close the segment out, do you have any final commentary? Because you're going to be running the next set. A couple of uh, a couple of things. I would love next year. I think it would be a fun game to bet on who takes more. 
You do like a uh, Malachi. Uh, you just basically say which one of these two players do you think sees more snaps? Who yeah. sees more catches? Uh, the second thing is you mentioned: Would anybody be upset if we don't see uh, Tyron Player? He plays two drives or whatever. I'm gonna reiterate. I don't care who goes out there at all. <laughs> we have a great time. Are um, you staying for the spring game? I'm just, I'm, I'm hoping you're going to be here. here. I can't put that out in the, in the, in the evening. Yeah, yeah. But yes, he's coming. Um, yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> Four quarters. Um, but no, I, uh, it's just get out of the game healthy and have a ton of fun. That's pretty much it. All right. We're going to close this segment out. Do you have something to say? I do not. You're looking at me. But that's all. I know. I'm good looking. It's okay. We're going to close this one out. Thank you, Drift, for being up here. Philly, Sam, Treadmill. You guys were awesome. Some of you guys are going to be back on the next segment. Woo! Sam and Sarah are going to do a quick picture. If you're watching on YouTube, back in five minutes. Thank you. Look here, boys. All right. One, two, three. All right. We need the TSL elevator music. Yeah, I know. I used to have a graphic. Good segment, fellas. Yeah, Karen, I'm going to do that. I appreciate it. Number of snaps is. Yeah, because I I messed that up. Number of snaps. He's on again. He's on again. (laughs) This is the shoot the shit. This is where we're talking about the top seven. All right, so. No one's going to sit there. Hell yeah. Cool. We're up to like a thousand people. Holy shit. Don't worry. That's amazing. That's fucking ridiculous. And when you say that, you know, you shared it with your shit. Yeah. I get all the fucking audience. Yes, I actually get like log on the medium on the rocks. I get blacked out and just like curse it. What's the next one? Oh, we're so bad. I had to. I got to do this. Jeremy, you're so next to me. I work with all the beef. Yeah, all right. The inspiration I really had boundary for I would go on and be like, all right, I'm not getting that drunk this year. And I go on and I'm like, And then I was like, what if I did this like all me? And my podcast is We are back for segment three of the spring game preview. Just past a thousand of you watching, listening. Whoa. We love that. Thank you all for hanging out with us. Pat's doing a happy dance in the back. You guys can't see him. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and do some intros. We're going to start number one with uh, the most important medical professional in the New River Valley. Uh, so we're going to start all the way to the right and uh, get some intros going on. Stand to my microphone. Can't help <laughs> hey, I'm Lord Dr. Jeremy. 
How y'all doing? <laughs> I didn't know they were putting on loudspeakers. I want all the families out there to know that you cannot come within 100 feet of Dan. <laughs> He's already on the front. <laughs> love you, Dan. No, I do love you. So, Dan, intro. Even though you've already given one, you can give one. Hey, man, I'm Dan from Tales from the Terror I'm just happy to be here, you know, with my boy, Lord Dr. Jeremy Counts. Uh, shout out to your boy, Tim Thomas. Tim. Love you, Tim. You don't come hang out with me anymore. Seed Dog. Hey, guys, how we doing? Bounty Corner Podcast here, Brian Siegler. I am so happy that Jeremy's up here with me because we have Jeremy on every year for the state of the program, and it's a fucking treat. So. I'm so glad he's up here with us. Every all. single year, I say I'm not going to black <laughs> out and drink too much. And every single year, I black out and don't know how the podcast ends. And then I find out, like, the next day, Jeremy, you just vanished. And Treadmill Horse. Woo! Hey, so my name's Dan. I run Treadmill Horse. And watching Brian chug that rail really? earlier yes. was one of the most impressive things I've ever seen. Yes. So. Shout out to Brian for doing the reaction was funny. Why, thank you. The reaction was funny. Mrs. Boundary Corner did not (laughs) (laughs) So, one of the first segments we're going to talk about, you all have this lovely sheet in front of you. And we all know how this works. We stack rank coaches, we stack rank players, we stack rank conferences. And it's extremely lazy. Some guy who we quite frankly could have had AI write the article, but the article needs to be written. Shout out to. (laughs) That's right, Pete. Um, So. One, I want to say, where do we have Coach Pry here right now? Coach Pry is ranked 12th out of 17 coaches in the ACC, which is preposterous. Uh, but number one, I want to say, what has impressed you the most of Coach Pry from year one to year two? Um, we can either go in order or you're fired up. You can go first. I'm fired up. A relationship building. Mm-hmm. Relationship building has been impeccable. We have like reestablished the 757. We've gotten Virginia recruiting back on board. We have been really consistent in the portal with filling holes when we need to, with supplementing some areas of concern. And I think just the interaction with the fan base and the way Pry does that has been really impressive to me. So, I mean, right now, I mean, I I can't really imagine a much better scenario at this point, even though I was a little like, I'm not sure after year one. I'll year two was amazing. It's also really impressive that the relationships extend past who he's recruiting. I mean, this staff goes on vacation together. They treat each other like they're actually friends, not just people who work together. The entire culture around that building has been so, so, so impressive. And it has come from the top down. And also, I really, what I really appreciate is his ability and willingness to speak freely about Hey, here's an area that we needed to get better. Here's what we did to get better in that area, and here are the results of it. Um, so this is home has been a marketing slogan here for a while now. I feel like when I talk, when I hear from the players' parents about how prime staff treat them, and I actually feel like they're they're coming through with the, the this is home slogan. Everyone feels like it's family. Everybody feels like it's home. So I think he's really delivering on that promise as head coach, and I think that that's something that we wanted post Fuente, and I think we've got it in spades in Brett Pry. Brett Pry came into Virginia Tech, and he turned chicken shit into chicken salad. Bars. And <laughs> just the fact, like, if you meet him, like, you know, it just feels, the, the, it's refreshing how genuine he is. He's very good at the, I call it um, the running for mayor part, like the public relations part of the job he gets, uh, his ability to retain 86% of the roster in the current era of college football is remarkable. And, uh, just, man, I'm just happy to have him. The kids call it Riz Dan. He's got it. He's got the Riz. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I do on a personal level, like, he was he was an all right guy or whatever. But there is a difference whenever, like, Fuente would come into the room. Like, you'd see him come in. Or like you, you rarely see him out. But if you like caught him at the country club or whatever, like he was, he was kind of like off on his own. Like he was a nice guy. Like when you interacted with him personally, but he was kind of off on his own. Whenever Pry comes into a room, it's hey, like going around shaking hands. So like the mayor comment, like that's pretty accurate. And he's like he's got like the personality, which you know also if he were not winning or we didn't have confidence in him, we wouldn't care. It's the fact that he's continually improving, and we're always seeing him not being satisfied, even when a position group 
is not or is looking really good he's still trying to add he's still trying to get better at it and that means a lot to us like that i think is the difference because i forget who said it but someone said that Boo's mentality a lot of times seemed like it was i'm going to beat you with what i got and prize mentality is i'm going to make everything i have better to beat you and i appreciate that and i i appreciate what prize doing and i hope it doesn't like come back to bite me in any way but i i believe in the man at this point you're good in, in, in terms also of access to the program and getting to know all of the important people surrounding it and the coaches and the support staff and the players i mean it's just the way that the entire program is marketed is absolutely fantastic yeah like he just came in and was like hey i need this i need that and he demanded it of the athletic department and i think they've done a good job of of help like giving him what he needs and one thing that really stands out to me was the boston college weekend first home opener his first home game here in 2022 after tech talk live there's probably like 70 people there at mclean's and he took like at least three minutes individually with each person after it was over and i was like he understands pride gets it yeah pride gets it. tm <laughs> thank you so we're going to go down this list instead of saying he's better than this guy he's better than this guy is there any coach on this list that one word comes to your mind when you see that that given coach bill o'brien should be 16. Debo sweeney's a charlatan <laughs> I was thinking of a nice way to say the same thing, so I appreciate it. I don't know how Dave Clawson's ahead of Brent Pry when he waxed Dave Clawson last year, but it's okay. Well, soon, soon enough, it will be revealed what was true and what wasn't. Why is Brent Lashley ahead of Chris Pry? Because he won a, in the championship. I mean, last he has year. more wins. Andre so, says yeah. so, or Jesse Jesse Simon. Them G five wins are a bitch, right? Yeah. Hey, Brent, I mean, Bill O'Brien hasn't been a head coach in how long? And he's a, a, ahead of Brent? Like, that's crazy. That one particularly makes no sense to me. Bill O'Brien I mean, is, is the one that pisses me off. Like, it's it's one of these, like, stupid rankings from some rando. Like, they got Pryor at 12. Now, he's clearly not number 12 from what he's done from the past few seasons. Whatever. Let him put this out there. We've got hop. We've got everything going on. Everyone's coming to the spring game like it's this huge event. It's pretty much a scrimmage. Like, we have a lot more hop than a lot of these programs. We have a lot more going for us than a lot of these programs. Who cares about these stupid rankings? Like, let these, like, media people say whatever they want. Like, prize got it. We've got, like, everything coming to us. We've got momentum. And we're going to ride it. Bars. Well, him cook. Bars. Still going to ask one more question on this media list. I'm going to say a coach and a school, and I want in or out. Are you in on it or are you out on it? And number one is Manny Diaz. I'm out because he's already proven he can't coach in the ACC. So, I, I mean, I don't really care if it's Miami or Duke. I, I think we, we know the we know how it's going to end there. Okay. Out. He is a really good defensive coordinator. Out. He uh floundered at Miami and they have a thousand times more resources than what he's going to have at Duke, especially on the admission side. I mean, I think meaning Manny Diaz is going to do really, really good there and it's going to highlight just how much of a cultural issue they have at Miami and it's going to be awesome. And we're going to sit around and we're going to throw that at him. He's, he's that. <laughs> Jeremy Cow. Out of left field, baby. Do you hear this mini guy at the end of the table just making stuff up that we're all supposed to buy? Yeah, right. So y'all think I have him on just for shits and giggles? Like, this is the man. Uh, I'm going to go with Brent Key from Georgia Tech. I'm in. I I'm in. I believe in him. I think it's, like, based on the results from last year, I'm like, I'm like, damn, this guy can coach. So I'm, I'm in. He maximizes the talent that he has, and he does good with the roster that he has. So that that that's it. He's gonna he's gonna go out there and he's gonna win you six or seven games every year, no matter who's on. Yeah, I'm in on Brent Key. He's the second best Brent on the list. I'm in. Honestly, don't give a shit. I don't think Georgia Tech is gonna have the funding or anything else to do anything. And last last one here, I want to ask you if you could only pick one of these three to have a really important year for their tenure coming up. You can only pick one to lead your program. Pat Narduzzi, Mac Brown, Dabo Sweeney. Shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Elaborate this question now. <laughs> so you can only pick one of these coaches to lead your program. It's Dabo Sweeney, Mac Brown, or Pat Narduzzi. We want them to lead it? Dabo, because Dabo's going to find the money. 
Yeah, the, I'm gonna say Dabo too. Dabo is like just the the best coach there is Pat. Dabo is the best recruiter, so he's gonna get you the players. Oh man. Yeah, give me Narduzzi. I do not want old Charlton Sweeney around me, and I don't want uh, Pat Brown stumbling up with his central trimmer trying to like coach the team. I don't care. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get Narduzzi. I hate the guy, but he's a good coach. This is gonna hurt coming out of my mouth. That Narduzzi, like y'all are crazy. I, it's gotta be. Is Dabo? Right? Oh it's gotta be man, Dabo. Dabo's gonna get you the talent. I mean, that's that's what Dabo's gonna, gonna get you the talent. But like, I think he's not adapting to the modern college football the atmosphere of the transfer portal and NIL. Is God's and I'm not. very, I'm very concerned about that program long term. Pat Narduzzi is gonna be what he is because he he can coach fo- football very well. One one good season with a offense coordinator he ran off. Yeah, he said Fair enough. He said Fair they enough. threw the ball too much and they had Kenny Pickett. Nobody said mean? a word about Matt Brown, positive negative word <laughs> Matt Brown Matt Brown can recruit. That's it. And he's essentially retired too. Yeah, with all due respect, he's like a foot out the door on career and maybe other you mean a foot a lot of these coaches like Matt Brown and Dabo, it's 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 gone past them because they've they're they're not going to adapt, and they were good in a system where they knew how to work the system and get the recruits they needed because they knew how to make the money flow then. Now Dabo can't launder money through a church. He doesn't have to. Spring, so he baby. doesn't have – he doesn't have, like, this huge competitive advantage. Because Bars. that's taken away, he can't – he can't actually coach. Do we – all right, I, I just – I'm asking a question. Do we actually believe that a lot of these other programs – don't cheat in different capacities. Everybody like cheating. I think Everybody they've always cheated, and I think the problem is, is that I don't know if Dabo has adapted to no, the new type of cheating. I, I, I agree with that, but Dabo gets a lot of pushback because he may, may not, or had some situations where he's able to play players. Breaking news: like most top twenty-five programs have done that. That's not like Most a Dabo. Top 50 program. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, not no, like a Dabo, that's not a Dabo. Dabo just did it really well. Yeah, Dabo just, you know, brought, brought crafts. He just brought the church in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he, he brought a uh, entity that you could brought God into the church. Have the IRS audit right. into it. Right. Last, uh, smart. last couple that I have here. So I actually like this one. Best Lane Stadium cheer or band song. So we can hum along this one. We can submit it. You can't stay stick it in. I love the uh, that one. I enjoy a lot. Um, <laughs> Which one, Bill? Wait, 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 one of my favorite hot songs, and they don't do it as much anymore, was in Castle when they would do Welcome Home from Coheed and Cambria. I love that song. That was sick. Uh, can you sing it? Can I sing it? Yeah. You want me to see Coheed and Cambria? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you want that? Yeah. No one wants that. Yes, do. do you want it? That's why we're here. We want it. <laughs> no, I don't perform. Uh, you arrive in Blacksburg for the weekend. Let's say let's let's go back in time. Let's say this is Drip's first time to Blacksburg. Oh shit! Like he's been here. Now. He's been here. No, but he's been here a good amount of times. We gotta stop giving him. Give, he's, he has made the investment, but let's pretend yes, he, he has. hasn't yet. Let's pretend he hasn't yet. And he goes, hey, Hokie Nation, I'm headed down from Cincinnati or Ohio, where where in Cincy, right? I'm headed down from Cincy. What is the? You bring someone to Tech for the first time. You absolutely must go to this restaurant, this bar, or have this thing. You gotta yeah. go to Tots and have a rail, dude. Yeah, exactly. Top shelf rail. You gotta top have it. Rail. You gotta spend the money. You gotta get it. It's the best thing out there. Do it pregame. Like when Big Game Boomer was in town, I brought him here, got him top shelf rail. He loved it. Speak real quick on economy. How much was a rail when everybody was in school? I don't know. How much is it right now? It was like ten, nine, nine bucks. Ten bucks. Nine, nine bucks. Nine. nine Affordable. Nine, nine, nine. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, to it's piggyback on that, it's tops and it's a rail. It's not the top shelf rail. It's just a rail. Um, what is a top shelf rail? Is this just like it's just, just better liquor? Yeah. liquor. That, I, I, I don't mean to be disrespectful. It costs thirty six dollars. That is, that is <laughs> unbelievably 
ungrit. 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 I'm a very ungrit person. So. I was a whale with a shot of like it was an extra shot of I think it was podcast. You don't need an extra anything in a rail. I think a third rail you do. He was. Six five, he's a huge man. They make he's Red Bull rails, man. that's crazy. But like, I feel like right of passages at Virginia Tech, uh, rail tots. I'm gonna put Joe's diner on that list. I love Joe's. Woo! Uh, Joe's great, Joe's a staple. And whenever people come to town, and I'm trying to give them like a novel experience that you're not gonna get in those places. Of course, I'll, I'll send them to Cabo, I'll send them to Macadoo, especially if they're from outside the region. Because Macadoo, there's only so many Macadoo's, uh, so they're but, waiting for like an hour for their food. I'm with Jeremy. Macadoo's, Macadoo's rocks. I love it. Macadoo's is great. Uh, but if someone if someone is coming to town and eating with me, and I'm going out and doing something, I'm probably gonna go over to PK's because I like. To Wait, PK's that, Pat, old Pat, write this down. We need to put a auction up where uh, we're yeah. auctioning off weekend with Jeremy. Oh, and go with Jeremy you all weekend. That's <laughs> we will start be the, the bidding. best or worst time of their life. We will start the bidding at we will pay you twenty dollars. <laughs> if you've I'm never had a, most days than people listen. If you've never had a slice of Benny's pizza in your life, shout out to the sponsor of Tales from the Terror I would go to Benny's to get a slice of pizza. Yeah. Shut up, Dan. I didn't know my thing. Anything else that we need to uh anything else that we need to do? Okay, I'll ask turkey, turkey leg question. question needs to come out. Turkey leg of the game. Yes or no? First of all, yes or no? Yeah. I, I've only ever had it oh. once in my life, which is, I know it's crazy. <laughs> um, it's just hard to eat, honestly, like at the, at the stadium. Like, and I'm not a big stadium food, food guys. I'm a big beer guy, so it just doesn't factor in. But it is good. Like, I, I do think it's a good, a good food item. I've never had one. The never turkey leg turkey is solid. Leg. So, like, I think the big question on here is, like, is a turkey leg shareable, right? Like that's to me, that's the big question. Um, if you will share a drink with someone, so you will share a turkey no, leg with them. No, no, and now there's a big difference. I would go ahead and take a sip out of your meal. If you offered me your turkey leg, I would be like, nay, sir. No, there is <laughs> no way. I would be, I'd like the turkey. If you're willing to stand in the line for the turkey leg, I'm not. Like time out. How okay. different? Would you, would you, would you share? Like would you share corn? Your hand, it's literally, it's like corn. It's like sharing corn. I, 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 share like corn I, I will share corn with my wife. I will share a turkey leg with my wife. That's right. Corn if you're sharing it with a spouse, no. yeah, that's fine. Yes. That, but a bro. A, Pete, clo- a Pete, close bro? Pete, here, here, Maybe. Here's if you will drink from my beverage, you can eat from my turkey. Yo, Pete, you try to share a turkey leg? Time out. The only, the only thing I want to share a turkey leg. Honestly, it just depends. It depends on how hungry I am. No, I'm the only thing you can share from a turkey leg is if someone is in dire need of like some kind of greased up lubrication. <laughs> and I'm talking dire. If no one's going to take a big old bite out of that turkey leg after you've done it. Are you sure? I hope not. I'm so glad we asked this question. I know. <laughs> any final, uh, any final submissions from anybody on questions? I just don't want anyone's fingers in my turkey leg. You can no, bite my turkey no, leg. No, no fingers in the turkey. Keep the phalanges out of my turkey. The latest thing that came out of that was Billy Race. Never Get had your a turkey leg. Yeah. 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 Never had one. I do need. I do need to do that. I'll cross her off the list this year. I've had pizza off the ground. I've had you know Reese's peanut butter cups. I've never had a uh, pizza leg. off the ground, but no turkey leg. No turkey legs. No. Pat's a big turkey leg guy. It's almost like a uh, accessory okay. for him. Victory bites. I just Victory did bites. Double Jameson cross up here, and you all are still on the same Miller lines. I'm not on the same Miller lines. Man, is less than a quarter left. And that will do it for the spring game pre uh, analysis. Thank you to our panelists. Thank you to our listeners, watchers, and attendees. Thank you so much, Woo! Mrs. Treadmill Horse, for taking this awesome yeah, photo. Out, Mrs. Horse. <laughs> we hope everybody has a great time. Can't wait to learn so much about the football team here right. in a few minutes. Thank you, everybody, and we will see you soon. Pete, also, round of applause for Pete for setting this up. Yeah, hey, hey, shout out, Pete. Pete, 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 Pete. 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 Let's go. Oh, oh, please. To the game. Oh, yeah. All right. One, two, three. All right, boys. There we go.